What's good, my people? As some of you know, I like movies very much. And I've seen a lot of ratings, especially IMDb Top 250. And half of those ratings are shit. The movies that have the highest rating are shit. Well, not all of them, but like the majority. The majority of the top, top 250 movies are shit. So I decided to do my own tops. And we are starting from the oldest. I don't have top 10 from the first half of the 20th century. So I had to expand it a little and uh, we are doing top 10 films from, from 1900 to 1960. Starting from the bottom. Harry, 1950. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't hear about this movie anything. Like, most of the people don't know it exists. It's not even in the top 250. But I think compared to what is in this top, Harvey should definitely be part of that list. It's not a very fun movie. It's not a very smart movie, but it is definitely a very sweet one. It's about a grown-up man with an imaginary friend. Not the Ted shit, but like the wholesome imaginary friend. And it's very nice. It's a very simple movie, but it works. So if you want to watch something sweet, that's definitely a movie that you could watch. The following five movies all have the same rating, and I had a hard time arranging them in that order. They all have 7 out of 10. Yeah, half of my list is lower than 8 out of 10. No, more than a half. Harry was 6 out of 10. So I'm <laughs> I'm pretty honest in my opinions. I don't give a 10 to every movie I like. That's not how ratings should work. So number 9. It's a Wonderful Life. This one you might have heard of. It's also a very sweet movie. Like, I wouldn't say it's as sweet as Harvey. <laughs> Harvey is definitely sweeter, but it's a Christmas miracle movie. Like, it definitely gave birth to this genre. So, it's about family and all this shit. So, if you like family type movies, <laughs> you could watch it. I don't actually remember what this film is about, but well, I, I, I uh, know the basic premise, but like everybody who, who has heard about this movie know the basic premise, but maybe Harvey should have been higher. Maybe Harvey should have been number nine and It's a Wonderful Life should have been number ten. But whatever, we are moving on. Number eight, Twelve Angry Men. You should have heard about this one. It's not as good as they say it is, but it's a pretty decent movie. It's not deserving its title, you know? It, it says they're angry, but like there were only three of them who were actually angry, and uh, the rest of them are having a hard time expressing any emotions at all. Maybe it should have been 12 Angry Women instead. Maybe it would have been a better movie, I don't know. It's a movie about prejudice. And prejudice is uh, a social construct, so you should be acquainted with them. So you can watch it, yeah. Number seven. Wild Strawberries, 1957. Half of this list is, coincidentally, I didn't plan this, are made in 1957. I don't know why it happened, but Twelve Angry Men also was filmed in 1957. So, Wild Strawberries. It's a Birdman movie, 
you know, the dude that filmed uh, the seventh seal. It's a very strange movie. It's a very strange movie. It's a weird, weird movie. Basically, it's about coming to terms with your life. Like, if you keep avoiding your problems in life, instead of solving them, they will still come and get you. Well, if you, if you get old enough. It's a movie about an old man facing his problems that he has been avoiding for his whole life. And it's a cautionary tale for anyone who is avoiding uh, therapy and uh, just keep, keep ignoring their traumas instead of curing them. So it's definitely something you should watch, yes. It's uh, the first film I would recommend to watch. Moving on! Number six, The Grapes of Wrath, 1940. This movie came out during World War II, which is very ironic because it tells about the Great Depression. So it was very fitting, I think. The hard times are always hard. This is also not a very smart movie. It's also kind of simple. The reason it's on this list is because of the actors. They are gorgeous. They are magnificent. Like the dude who plays the pastor. I don't remember his name. <laughs> I watched it a long time ago. Well, you know, if you know what I'm talking about. The dude who plays the pastor. Ex-pastor. He's great. Like... Fuck the main character, this guy is good. Seriously. Like, you should, you should watch this movie just because of him. He's marvelous. Yeah. Number five, Ikiro, 1952. So, this is an Akira Kurosawa movie. And it's not a regular samurai type of movie. It's about... Well, it was a contemporary movie, like uh, a film depicting the 50s Japan. Ikiru translates as live, so to live. And uh, it's about it's about value on your life, not taking it for granted. Like for people who are workaholics, alcoholics, all type of holics, who are wasting their life instead of living it. I think they should watch it. Yeah. Number four. We are now on eight out of ten type of movies. And uh, we only have only one movie that is eight out of ten. And uh, this movie is The Bridge on the River Kwai. I was really surprised I gave it this high of rating. Because this is a war type movie. And I don't like war type movies because they all look the same. And everything that is happening in them is always the same. And, uh, like, why you keep filming the same thing, and I don't know. I think uh, if you decide to film a movie, you should bring something original. Because all war movies are all the same, literally. This movie is great exactly because of that. It's not like just another war movie. This movie is about values. When you work hard on creating something, and what you created is used for something you don't want it to be used for. And you have no other choice but to destroy everything you have built. That's not a very common thing. But like you can extrapolate. There are some things we feel obligated to do. Like for our family, for our significant other at work, etc. And uh, we contribute to something not because we want to contribute to it, but because we are urged by other people. It's important for them, but not for us. So it makes you think about it. Moving on. Top three. But before top three, 
honorable mentions. Films you expected to see in this rating, but they aren't in it. Bicycle Thieves, 3 out of 10. La Dolce Vita, 3 out of 10. Vertigo, 3 out of 10. Psycho, 4 out of 10. Seven Samurai, 5 out of 10. Singing in the Rain, 5 out of 10. The Seventh Seal, 6 out of 10. Citizen Kane, 6 out of 10. Casablanca, 6 out of 10. And now back to top 3. Number 3, City Lights, 1931. It's a Charlie Chaplin movie, and it's the best and only Charlie Chaplin movie that you should watch. I watched, well, I wouldn't say all of his movies, but a lot of them, like five. I don't know how many he has, but like I watched five. And City Lights is not a comedy. Well, it's a bit of a comedy. It's a tragic comedy, and it's marvelous. Like it makes you feel, despite it's a silent movie, despite it being a really old movie, like 1931. What it aged like wine, like seriously. Well, it's ten out of ten. Top three are all ten out of ten. Yeah, it's a great movie, like, watch it. Number two, Dial M for Murder, as well as number one, it's a detective story. And it's a book adaptation, and it's very clever. Honestly, it's so complex that I don't remember much from it, <laughs> but it's a great detective story. Like, uh, today I watched uh, The Murder, Murder of the Orient Express, and well, I didn't learn anything new. Like, I already knew the story of Murder on the Orient Express, you don't need to see the movie to know this story. Well, because it's simple. Like, the plot of the Orient Express uh, the detective investigates the murder on the train and turns out 12 people killed one person. The end. Like, it's so simple. The only reason this movie is popular just because how bizarre this whole concept is. Like, 12 murderers, what? One victim, what? Like, it's stupid. No one, <laughs> no one could have done it. Like, in real life, no, nothing like this would have ever happened. It's stupid. But Dial M for Murder, it's very realistic. It's a clever movie for smart people who like detective stories. Yeah. Number one, Witness for the Prosecution, 1957. This movie is also a very great detective story. I also don't remember shit about it. But I was in awe when I watched it. It was very easy to place it number one because I had so many emotions watching it. The suspense is real, my friends. Yeah. That's all for today. If you have any questions, or any opinions, or you want to talk to me about movies, not just like movies from the first half of the 20th century, leave a comment below, or DM me on Discord, I will add you to my server, we have a movies channel, we can talk there. Yeah, determinism is freedom. See ya!